It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is continuing to operate as an essential business under New York City executive order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. Most employees are working remotely, while a few are working in the Adafruit factory to help manufacture and ship desperately needed PPE to the surrounding area and beyond. This week, Adafruit was interviewed by Michelle Earhart of Tom's Hardware regarding their switch from selling electronics to selling and producing face shields and other PPE. The discussion includes the changes to how Adafruit is operating, the new protective gear we're carrying and producing, sourcing materials for production, and plans to continue carrying PPE. Check out the full article on tomshardware.com slash news slash Adafruit dash making dash PPE. You can continue to follow photos and videos on the Adafruit blog under Adafruit Chronicles, and we'll continue to post updates on social media. CircuitPython 5.2.0 went direct to release this week. It features a new port to Lidex, a Python-powered hardware description system used to define a soft SOC that is then loaded onto an FPGA. There are also a few minor fixes and improvements over 5.1.0, including support for additional baud rates for NRF UART, including MIDI's 31250, Display I.O. support for inverted backlights, fixes to IMX RT UART read length and NeoPixel timing, and the ability to read pixel values from PixelBuff. Thank you to everyone who submitted features and fixes to CircuitPython 5.2.0. The ESP32-S2 was recently released, and the community has been actively working on software. The foundation of porting CircuitPython is tiny USB support. This weekend, Lady Ada live streamed TinyUSB running on the ESP32-S2. This work paves the way for further work porting CircuitPython to the board. Thanks to Ha Talk for all of his efforts on TinyUSB. Adafruit is planning products based on the ESP32-S2, but there's no ETA. We recommend heading over to DigiKey, which has various ESP32-S2 products available now. Adafruit is continuing to submit boards to the Open Source Hardware Association for open source certification. Adafruit has always been an open source hardware company, predating the Oshawa certification process. We recently decided to begin submitting all of our boards for certification. Last week, the first certification approvals came through. This week, 26 more boards were certified, including the rest of the CircuitPython compatible microcontrollers. Check out the Oshawa Certified Projects directory at certification.oshawa.org for all the details. Electronic Cats announced their latest CircuitPython-based electronics board, the NFC Copycat. It works by reading or emulating an NFC card, depending on the necessities of the researcher. With this board, the user will have a device capable of storing magnetic stripe data or NFC payment data to be replayed later, known in the cybersecurity world as a replay attack. This is the first cybersecurity tool that supports CircuitPython. Check out electroniccats.com for more information. CircuitPython.org now has available links to the bootloader files for microcontroller boards. This simplifies the process for users to obtain the latest bootloader file. Visit circuitpython.org downloads, select your board, and find the bootloader information. This comes as a result of an important UF2 bootloader update. A new version of the UF2 bootloader is available for SAMD51 boards, such as the Metro M4 Express, Feather M4 Express, Itsy Bitsy M4 Express, Pi Portal, Pi Gamer, Pi Badge, and others. Version 3.9.0 or later fixes a rare but annoying problem that occasionally erases parts of the internal flash memory when the board is plugged in or power cycled. Both Arduino and CircuitPython are affected. We highly recommend that you update your bootloader if you have a SAMD51 board. 
download the updater from the circuitpython.org slash downloads page for your board and follow the instructions to update. Instructions will also be added to the Adafruit Learn System guide for each board. The Python Software Foundation announced the newest fellow members for the first quarter of 2020. Eight new members were announced. Check out the Python Software Foundation blog for details. The fellow work group is looking for more members around the world. More information is available at python.org slash psf slash fellows. The Winterbloom online store has opened. Winterbloom carries the CircuitPython-based Winterbloom Soul and Big Honking Button Eurorack synth modules. Visit winterbloom.com and check it out. Greg posts to Twitter using CircuitPython on the Orange Crab board, now with half its 16 megabytes of flash allocated to CircuitPython. Go Jimmy Pie shares a blog post on Twitter outlining their experiences getting CircuitPython loaded on the FOMU board using the Windows subsystem for Linux. Glenn posts a video to YouTube of a CircuitPython-based metronome for the Adafruit Pi badge. The code is also shared on GitHub. David shares a video on Twitter of an Adafruit Clue driving a Raspberry Pi compatible Pimeroni LED shim using the bit to Pi and CircuitPython. Meet Spiderwing, a spider robot powered by Adafruit Feather and CircuitPython designed by Dishipu. Kevin posted the completed project of adding lights and sirens to his son's fire truck bed. It uses 3D printed parts, a Circuit Playground Express and a strip of NeoPixels, and is running Circuit Python. Check it out on Maker.io. Mason published a project to Hackster using a Circuit Playground Express and Circuit Python to create an RGB light for macro photography. Whitney shows how to use the RFM69 radio bonnet on the Zinc 7000 platform for Zincberry with Adafruit Blinka and CircuitPython. Young put together 30 simple tricks to level up your Python coding, including multiple ways to manipulate sequences, comprehensions, generators, lambdas, and much more. Visit medium.com slash better programming to read more. Learn how to build an IQ-style radio using a tiny Pico running MicroPython. Find a video on YouTube and code on GitHub. Congratulations to Mouse vs. Python Pi Dev of the Week, Mike Piernot, PyOhio organizer and active Pythonista. Read the interview with Mike on blog.pythonlibrary.org. There are six new boards in the CircuitPython pipeline this week. New on CircuitPython.org, the NFC Copycat, the Winterbloom Big Honking Button, and the 8086 Consultancy Commander. New to CircuitPython support in 5.2.0, the BD Micro Vena M0, the Thunder Pack, and the FOMU. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn System for a series of guides on getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There are five new CircuitPython guides in the Adafruit Learn System this week, including how to use a clue to display BLE multi-temperature monitoring in a guide from John Park, use the new IBBQ library to show multiple temperature probe values simultaneously on the clue display, and Create a CircuitPython-powered creative inspiration activity generator in a guide from Colin Cunningham. Press a button on your clue board to display an idea for an activity. This project takes inspiration from oblique strategies, but updates the idea for flexibility and more of an all-ages appeal. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 224. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, 
Dan updated the UF2 bootloader for the SAMD51 boards and added the aforementioned bootloader section to the circuitpython.org site, including instructions on how to update. Jeff has continued work on protomatter and has been improving error handling because it has a very specific requirement for the pins that can be used. There is also one final memory usage bug to deal with before it can be included in CircuitPython. Melissa finished up a complete reskin of the Web Bluetooth dashboard, including easier to read graphs, smoother color gradients, and updated features. She also updated the associated learn guide to include the updated dashboard. The PyCon US 2020 team announced planned talks, tutorials, posters, and much more online. They are aiming to begin releasing content this week when the conference was scheduled to start. To participate, go to the PyCon US 2020 remote page or subscribe to the PyCon 2020 YouTube channel. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We are over 17,900 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.